Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Uxmal. Now this is one of the most important sites in Mexico, certainly in the whole Yucatan Peninsula. This dates back to at least 300 BC originally. You can just see behind me, this is the Pyramid of the Magician or the Sorcerer or the Sorceress or the Dwarf. There's lots of amazing story. I'm going to tell you all about this. Um, it's at least 35 meters tall, so it's over 100 feet tall, probably 110 feet. It's got curved edges around it. I first came here back in 2003. The name kind of means thrice built or thrice occupied, something like this. And it is an amazing construction. It has five different levels to it as well, not just one or two, five. The latest level you can see up on the western facade. Uh, this side basically and this is where you see all the prook style and chenes style beautiful intricate almost psychedelic stonework on the top of the pyramid so ushmal officially according to the ancient mayan records uh, was founded around 500 a.d and even the toltecs got involved from about 1000 a.d and it stopped being built about 1100 it's in the classic puk style which we find along the whole puk route here with uh, different sites like sayil kaba labna and so forth and a few others that follow this route down and this is about 60 miles south of merida so you really have to be in merida or you know maybe campeche to get here coming from tulum or cancun is a very long drive but this is an impressive site in many, in many different ways. And we're going to have a look around. I had a quick look at the pyramid. I'll show you some more close-up shots that I got previously. I mean, there's virtually no one here today. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we're in, it's like early uh, February 2021. We're in COVID. But there's a few people here. It's open. This is one of the only sites open along the Pook route. Um, but there are some really interesting features here. There's evidence of the plume serpent, Chak, the rain god, who's really an ancestor or a recreation of Tlaloc, who was one of the Quinnamets in Giants. But this is a classic Mayan site, one of the most important in all of Mexico. Certainly one of the most impressive. When we have a look around the site, you'll see what I mean when you see some of the most amazing stonework. There's lots of symbolism here. There's lots of earth energies here. This place is a really important site. When I was here in 2003, I did some dowsing and I found all sorts of energy moving through the site, energy lines, there's all, lots of underground water. And it really is a stunning place. And if you're gonna be anywhere in Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula, you've got to come and visit Uxmal. So one of the interesting things about Uxmal and about this pyramid in particular is this legend of a dwarf who is said to have built it, who was hatched from an egg and um, was brought up by like a sorceress or a bruja which is what they're called here in mexico and he eventually challenged the king and became the king of Ushmal. and he built the pyramid in one night and he also said to have built the uh, sacbe or sacred robe between here and kaba again in a magical way now i'm going to give you more detail about this particular myth because it echoes many other stories with dwarfs or giants really building these ancient sites. So one of the other interesting aspects of the Pyramid of the Dwarf or the Magician is that he whistled and the stones got moved into place. This is also a tradition that some natives talk about Tiwanaku and horns being blown in like the walls of Jericho to move, levitate and raise stones. It's also said to be how the Sagbees were made as well. And the whole story of the Dwarf has much more meaning than people realize. Uh, and I believe it, that links, that proves this earlier phase where these early traditions of large stone moving comes from and even the laying down of the sacbis because there's one here between here and Kaba and this is actually what the dwarf was supposed to have laid this himself even though he got the king to lay the first stone for him and then magically he did the rest using the whistling techniques. So just next to the main pyramid there we also have this stunning corbel roof chamber which is part of a much larger complex which i'll describe to you in a moment but we have some evidence of kind of megalithic construction here it's one of the things we're going to be looking for today and this is absolutely beautifully done i mean you can just see here they've got a water channel coming down here you've got the corbel roof the classic style that we find you see the way these stones are beautifully placed together it almost has an inca kind of quality with these square blocks they're very neat on the front but very untidy on the back but you can see the way they're put together they're kind of like 
uh, they extend at the base of each of the blocks and then get smaller at the top and, these, uh, and shove, they shove cement or mortar between them and that holds it all up. And so on the surface it looks amazing but it does get a bit rough underneath. I think one of the things about this pyramid as well is that it was built five times, it has five different levels which is something which is not unique. I mean, every 52 years when the calendars unite, the, the Harb, the 365 day, and the Sulk in the 260 day calendar, and they do a Venus round and all this kind of stuff, they actually meet up. But you can see here, I've actually been inside this. I went inside this twice or three times in 2003. Um, and you can go inside it and see the pyramids underneath it. And so there are, you can actually see the constructions. Now you can't go in, like they've closed it all up. You can't climb the pyramid or anything like this. But um, it just shows you that this, you know, is a rebuilt, reused site, at least for 500 AD. But I think there's evidence here of occupation going back to at least 300 BC. And this is why I think there might be megalithic aspects here we're gonna look out for. So we have this part of the site, this is part of the nunnery and uh, this has got multiple rooms in it. We're in the back of it, around the side of it where the pyramid is obviously. There's a lot of rubble in here, can't really see it too much but again you can see this beautiful mega sized corbelled roof. So we're now around the back of the nunnery and you see there's actually a, a modern stairs going on but you can see the beautiful pook style kind of artwork up there. So we're gonna go around the front, that's where it gets really impressive. We've got the sun shining on it as well. But it's just, I haven't seen around the back here before and you can see like these megalithic blocks making up these corners. They're very, very big compared to the small stones next to it. This is where you can see some of these megalithic blocks making up the corner really of this part of the site. You can see these, look, these are huge. So you've got the smaller blocks there, then you've got like the megaliths that are kind of perfectly shaped. And you can see the beautiful artwork up on top there, beautiful stonework. Now we're heading into the nunnery look at this that is absolutely amazing oh my god so yeah we came here in 2018 with the group and in 2009 and 10 i was here but this just reminds me of the, the stunning nature of this if you look carefully you can see like a bird motif just on the right of the central kind of chunk there you've got a crouched figure on the left and you have these kind of chack noses kind of sticking out the rain god. See elements of Quetzalcoatl here as well. So this is very, very interesting. You see the little sort of pillars and like grates, like little windows. Absolutely amazing. It just gets more impressive the more you look around. And then we come into the great kind of, wow, look at this. <laughs> Always impresses me. Looks more, it just gets me every time. You just see some of the details here. Now this isn't dissimilar to Mittler and parts of Monte Alba and Mittler specifically. It's got a very kind of similar thing. Mittler is based down in Oaxaca. It's one of, one of the major Zapotec sites. And this has got those influences. I mean, this is actually partly Toltec as well, we must remember. So there might be Toltec influences on top of the Puk and Chenez style, which we're gonna find all over uh, the site. So this is the quadrangle of the nuns, a name given by Diego Lopez de Cogaludo. And just a few hundred years ago, it's four palaces, each with different levels and patios. They think it dates to around 900 to 1000 AD. Lots of motifs here of lattice work, colonnades, the rain god, serpents, owls, Venus, geometric elements, and many other aspects 
And so there's so much going on here just in this particular spot. So we just have these kind of beautifully cut pillars just within the kind of quadrangle, the nunnery. And down there, you can actually see kind of almost like a kneeling chakmul or something statue, the knees sticking up in the air with his feet and something between his legs. And then we continue and then see more of this utterly beautiful stonework. And the design is so modern looking. It's just absolutely amazing. You see this head sticking out here. It looks like a snake's head. All the other symbolism up there. So let's go and take a look inside a couple of these rooms. See if there's anything of interest. You've got amazing echoes in here. You can hear that. You've got wooden beams here. Very interesting. So there's a lot of wood in these sites that people don't realize. And yeah, you can see the corbelled roof. Here, bats in there. There's another chamber here. It's got like loads of rubble in it at the moment. I can see bats flying around. So yes, yeah, so there's multiple rooms here. And obviously we've got the doorway. we've got this stunning view of the pyramid of the magician or uh, you know the pyramid of the dwarf and you can see like you can see the way it's been built over in the pook style on the top and the protruding bit at the top but you know we must remember that this is five pyramids in one and said to be built by a dwarf in one night so here we have clearly an image of what almost looks like the earth monster Actually, it's Tlaloc, the rain god. This is quite conspicuous because you wouldn't expect to find him at Mayan sites like this. Usually it's Chuck or different versions. Absolutely amazing. So to find that here, but the mouth and the shape of the face is very really Olmecoid, almost similar to the statue at San Lorenzo, which I show you an image of, with the frowning and the frowning kind of above the nose and also the kind of psychedelic eyebrows. It's kind of got elements of um, Olmec. And, and the fact that it's Tlaloc, we're talking about Quinnemets and Giants being associated with this site, as well as the Dwarf, obviously, who built the pyramid. We have uh, the Plumed Serpent. So we have Quetzalcoatl, it would be Cuckoo Clan here, also known as the Plumed Serpent, represented very strongly all through this part of the site. And he's mixed with, well, the Rain God. This is much like we see at Teotihuacan, where we actually have like a mixture of the rain god Tlaloc and the plumed serpent and even the serpents here are kind of reminiscent of what we see on the temple of the plumed serpent or the pyramid of Quetzalcoatl at Teotihuacan. So again we have eight of these or 16 depending on which way you look at it going across the double headed so the numbers might add up to something it might be calendrical because we know Quetzalcoatl, Cuckoo Clan was linked with the creation and foundation of all the calendars here in ancient Mexico. So let's go inside another one of these. And this is interesting. I mean, it's really dirty walls in here, but you've got like this sort of bulbous shaped kind of stone. And this one here, this is like part of, a, oh, sorry, part of a check. You've got loads of rubble here, but some of these are carved, and just been left to rot. But this is interesting. It's like some kind of head. And that's got symbols still carved on it, like plumes. Could be part of one of the plume serpents we find above the doorways here. So just inside the courtyard of the, the quadrangle is actually like megalithic kind of columns that have just been left here. So a closer look. Excuse my shadow, that's your drill hole in one of them. So we've got a megalithic aspect here which could be a stele that's fallen. It looks like something of importance that's in the middle of this very sacred spot have like a causeway here or platform 
And there's actually a stele over here I want to show you. It's got some interesting calendrics on it, apparently. And yeah, you can see this is like a calendar stone at the base. It's like a calendar seat, almost. They're saying, don't sit here. <laughs> interesting. So that is some kind of royal seat. But it looks like it has calendar glyphs all over it. That is absolutely, that's like a megalithic seat for the ruler, potentially for the great dwarf king who came into power at this site. So we see more symbolism up here. So much of it. There's lots of, I think there's a big whole number system here. You can sort of see the, the sort of equilateral numbers. You've got Tlaloc, it's being discovered, not Chark, even though both of them are probably here. On this smaller temple in front, we have more symbolism. We have this kind of upside down T shape. We have these amazing pillars. These are like megalithic pillars here, look. So these could have been reconstructed from the earlier megalithic occupation, which was no doubt here, like we find probably at most Mayan sites. And you can see like they've got indentations, these almost look like Roman or Greek kind of style. And this is what we're starting to see here more and more, especially in the Puk region. It's almost Greek. It's got a classical style about it. Let's look at some of the detail here. I mean, what's this? Is this a nub sticking out or is it just part Actually, no, it's just part of one of these. You can see these around the tops of the pillars. Beautiful limestone carving. The limestone is heavy, but it's not that difficult to carve compared to like basalt and granite. So you can understand that they could do it at this time. But look at, look at the style of this place. It is absolutely gorgeous. And look, you can see serpents up on some of these, actual proper serpents not on the opposite side where we have like eight kind of going across with 16 heads, but actual curved serpents. You've got a humanoid figure there. You've got another humanoid figure over there, the head sticking out of like a serpent. That could be Quetzalcoatl. God, it's just so much to see here. You've got plumes around this serpent head. That is interesting. So is that, that's definitely an image of the plume serpent. Plus you've got the spiral just beneath it there. You've got owls, you've got calendrics, you've got everything going on here at Ushmal. So we're just continuing our walk along here, this side of, and you can just, I mean, please point out anything. I've, I've got human heads coming out of plumed serpents, you've got spirals, you've got owls, you've got Tlaloc, even more amazingly. I did not expect to see here. I thought that was Chuck, the rain god. So this is like, almost like referring or even revering an earlier kind of phase. It could have been the earliest phase of this site. You've got these great doorways, you've got more serpents, you've got human figures. Absolutely stunning. Hola. <laughs> so we're just in the shade now at one end. And we'll just do a little scan back so you can see the whole thing. We'll continue around. So we're just going to head out of this part of the site now. We're running out of time. Let's go through this beautiful doorway here. We're going to get over to another part of the site. There's the ball court just down there. So much to see here. Obviously you've got this side of it as well as even more beautiful carvings, beautiful doorway, vaulted doorway, absolutely stunning. So we're just coming out of the nunnery, which is the name given to it. And that is amazing. See some of the stonework in there is just stunning. We even got around the edge and in the pillars, some megalithic aspects suggesting an earlier phase, even Tlalocs in there one of the Quinnamets and the leader of the Quinnamets and Giants and Quetzalcoatl. So we almost got like a Teotihuacan vibe going on here, as well as like Mitla and Monte Alban. So Ushmal is interesting. It's a bit different to the other sites. It's well worth a visit. And please subscribe, hit the like button, share the video, anything you can. If you can support us on Patreon, we'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time, Megalithomaniacs. <laughs>